Hi, this is Paul Salt from iPhone Dev TV. I want to give you a quick tutorial on how you can leverage particle effects in your own game. And what I want to highlight is when you're working with particle effects, if you're doing a simple effect like the star layer here, you don't need to worry too much about how it's going to composite. But when you start working on a, an advanced particle effect like this spaceship thruster, you want to get this so that it looks right. And so one of the issues that you'll run into is related to alpha blending. Here we have a few different options. And if you've ever worked with Photoshop or anything like that, you've got different blend modes. So you can do an additive blend mode where if you keep adding colors together, they eventually become a whiter color. And that's what's happening to create this type of effect in our game. And you can also have sort of an alpha blend mode. And that's where you have just an image with transparency and you want to composite on top of a background. So that's like our spaceship on top of the background. Well, it turns out that when we work with our particle systems, they default to a additive blend mode. And so that when we go over our background, the, the composition actually looks a little bit awkward. And what you're gonna notice here is that your thrusters colors actually get washed out. So they become super white when we move over a white background. This is something that you won't notice until you're actually playing around with your game. And you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Why is it doing that? All right, so what we're going to have to, to play with here is the SK effect node. Um, but what we can also experiment with is if you open up your, your particle system. So right now I have the particle system here on the right just so you can see it. And we can change the blend mode on this, this panel right here. So this is the, the right panel here. And right now it's on additive, so you can see that we're getting color stacking up. If I change this to alpha, you're going to notice that now it takes on the, the color as well as the ramp color that we see here. And if we were to rerun this, we wouldn't get that sort of nice spaceship flame looking. Instead, we get this muddy, muddy effect. And even still, this doesn't blend well. This is blending with uh, an additive blend onto our background. So it still doesn't look the same as the effect that I see on the right with our, our little test animation here. So we're developing the animation in Xcode, but we don't see how it finally looks on our, our final product because the only thing that we can change is the background color. So we can't put our, our background in, into this little test mode. So what you're gonna have to do is switch this back to add and we'll save that. Then we're gonna go over to your game scene and wherever you're adding your thruster. So here I've added the thruster, I've adjusted the, the Z position so that it's gonna be below my player. I've got basically a player node that's got two sub nodes. It's gonna have the actual sprite, which is our SK sprite node, and then our particle system, which is our SK emitter node. We want the emitter to be below, so you can see I've set the Z order to zero, and then the player ship's gonna be one with inside that player node. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a player effect node, and so one of the things you'll run into is you might get a crash here. That's because you can only add it once, so what I need to do is when I go to add this extra node, we gotta make sure that we don't add our player thruster twice. So we just have to comment out this line. We really want to delete that. So I'll just go ahead and delete player node.add child because we won't need it anymore. We're going to composite our, our sprite effect into, and now we have a totally different looking effect. We've got the additive blend mode of the particle system itself, and then that is composited onto our background using an alpha blend. And now when we go over these white areas, we don't wash out the blue of our particle system. You're gonna notice that we still have that nice blue outline. That's kind of what I really wanted for this effect to have sort of this, this trail behind the player ship. I even have it so that I can pause the game. This animation still goes, but the gameplay stops. So it's really exciting what you can do. All we're doing here is uh, then treating this as our, our, our main node. So the Z position really doesn't matter. This one's not gonna affect anything. Now that we have uh, an effect node containing it and that is added to our player notes. And now we have this different hierarchy and this is really up to you. But if I were to change this so that the Z position was two, you would see this above the player ship. So it's all about compositing and all your different layers. If you really want the effect above the ship, that's fine. My art isn't designed for that effect, but I mean, it would look kind of cool if this was like flames, like if my ship was taking damage and I wanted to have flames on top of the ship, that's how you can change the, the depth order for your particle effects then you can add some smoke and all kinds of fun effects. All right, so that's it for a little tutorial on how to work with the SK effect node. If you're interested in learning more about how to make games, I have an online course that's got a ton of videos. It's a 31-day course that will teach you everything you need to know 
about making your first iPhone game. It includes physics, animations, particle effects, user interfaces, and it will also talk about how to sell products within your app. 